Hi, welcome to this short introduction to the rules and standard procedures for conducting Toastmasters speech contests at club level. It is not a substitute for reading the full rule book. Where conflict is perceived between what I'm saying and the rule book, the official rule book always takes precedence. We have also produced a separate video giving an overview of the specific rules for each of the international evaluation, humorous and table topics contests. Section one, the speech contest rule book is protocol and applies to all official Toastmaster speech contests. You cannot modify the rules for your club's contest. Contestants must be a paid member of the club at which they are competing. And this means having dues and membership current with world headquarters. Clubs must also be in good standing to hold a contest. A member can compete at each club for which they are a member. They need to have completed level one and two of any pathway or six projects of the competent communication manual. Some people are not eligible. These include various district and international officers and those campaigning for office. Also the contest chair and all functionaries and presenters of education sessions related to contests. The winner of the World Championship of Public Speaking is not eligible to compete in future international speech contests, but they can compete in all the other contests. Judges and functionaries must be a paid member of any club. And note at club level, there is no requirement for Pathways project completion for judges. Contest competitors are ineligible to be functionaries or judges. The contents of prepared speeches are selected and created by the contestant. Content must be substantially original, and this means 25% or less may be quoting, paraphrasing, or referencing someone else. There's a new rule. A contestant may not reference a speech presented by one of their competitors. If a contestant intends to use props in their speech, they must notify the contest chair in advance and comply with section eight of the rule book. Each contest needs a contest chair, chief judge, at least five voting judges, a tie-breaking judge, two counters, and two timers, unless impractical. Voting judges must remain anonymous such that the competitors do not know who is judging them. Contest chair may appoint a contest master to host the contest. The chief judge does not actually judge any of the com contestants. Makes perfect sense, right? The judges and competitors must receive separate briefings before the contest. And this is to cover rules and procedures and for contestants to draw a speaking position. If a contestant misses the briefing but arrives before the contest master is introduced, they can compete if their paperwork is in order and if they waive the opportunity of a briefing. If they arrive after the contest master is introduced, sorry, disqualified, digital signatures are permitted for all paperwork. Voting judges must sign the judge's certificate of eligibility and code of ethics and return it to the chief judge. They need to have the correct ballots and judging instructions distributed in advance. After each contestant speaks in the contest, there is one minute of silence. This is for the judges to mark their ballots. Kind of feels weird, but go with it. After the final contestant has finished speaking, again, there is silence. until the ballot counters have collected all of the ballots. For a judge's ballot to be valid, they must enter their choices for first, second, and third place as appropriate, and then sign and print their name. The tie-breaking judge. The chief judge selects and is the only one who knows their secret superhero tie-break judge identity. They don't come to the judge's briefing, but they will need to get the tie-breaking judge's guide and ballot appropriate to the contest being held before the beginning of the contest. More on their role later. Ballot counters need to be given the counters tally sheet. They complete, collect completed ballots from voting judges, except the tiebreak judge. The tiebreaking judge gives their ballot directly to the chief judge. Ballot counters tabulate results using the counters tally sheet. Three points for each first place ranking from a judge, two for second, one for third, and then add up the total points. All ballot counters must verify these tallies. They then rank contestants by number of points scored. The contestant with the highest number of points is the winner, etc, etc. If there is a tie, guess what happens? Who might break a tie? I bet you didn't guess it. It's the tie-breaking judge. Their ballot is then opened. 
the tied candidate who is highest ranked by the tie-breaking judge will gain the tied place. The chief judge then puts the ranking onto the notification of contest winner form and submits to the area director or contest chair of the area contest. The chief judge also puts the name of the winners in reverse order onto the results form. Don't get this wrong. Announcing the wrong winner, awkward. For this reason, although the announcement of contest winners is final, if the list of winners is announced incorrectly, the chief judge, ballot counters, or timers are permitted to immediately interrupt to correct the error. The chief judge keeps the ballots and tally sheets until the winner has been announced and then destroys them. Each contest has two timers. They need to be given the speech contest time record sheet and instructions for timers in advance. One timer has a stopwatch. They are considered the official timer of the contest and complete the time record sheet. The other timer has a method for displaying green, yellow and red colours. Please contact visually impaired speakers to ask how they would prefer to be given warning signals. They are allowed to choose but must provide any specific devices. Timing will begin with the contestant's first definite verbal or non-verbal communication with the audience. This therefore can involve, for example, sound effects and gestures. For an online contest, looking at the camera is considered eye contact. The speaker should start pretty much straight away and isn't allowed to delay unnecessarily. No signal can be given for going into overtime. If a time disqualification occurs, the contest chair must announce it prior to announcing results, but must not name the contestants involved. Finally, protests and disqualifications. If you are a voting judge or a contestant and have a protest relating to eligibility, originality, or reference to another contestant's speech, you must lodge it with either the chief judge or the contest chair prior to the announcement of the results. If you don't fit these criteria, save your breath because it won't be considered. Audience members, this means you. <laughs> Contestants must be given a chance to respond to the voting judges if they are considered for disqualification on the basis of originality or for referencing another contestant's speech. A majority of the voting judges must concur in the decision to disqualify. The contest chair gets the sole say on disqualification on the basis of eligibility and all judging decisions are final. Whew. I hope you got all of that. See you in the next video for the individual contest overviews.